Hi friends, today in this lecture we are going to do an overview of the upper limb and talk about the brachial plexus and in this lecture I am going to answer the questions like what is the brachial plexus and what are the roots, what are the trunks, divisions, cords and branches. So let's get started. Now the brachial plexus is formed by the ventral rami from C5 to T1 spinal cord levels as indicated in this picture. See usually they provide motor and sensory innovation to the upper limb muscles and skin and the ventral rami form these different parts roots, trunks, divisions, cords and branches and so See, we see roots that form trunks, that form divisions, and that form cords, that form branches. Now, let's talk about each one of those divisions separately. So, first, let's talk about the roots. See, the roots are formed by the C5 to T1 ventral rami. So, they C5 and it gives rise to a nerve called the dorsal scapular nerve. So, of the C5 ventral ramus, also known as C5 root of the brachial plexus, the dorsal scapular nerve arises and it innervates the levator scapulae and rhomboid muscles. There's the C6 root and there's the C7 root of the brachial plexus. Now notice coming off of C5, C6 and C7 roots, there's a nerve formed, we call that as long thoracic nerve that innervates the serratus anterior muscle. Then there's the C8 and the T1 roots. These roots are going to exit between the anterior middle scalene muscles and those roots, the gives rise to trunks. So roots gives rise to trunks. So there's the C5, C6 root. They come together to make the upper trunk. The upper trunk has a nerve that come off called the suprascapular nerve that innervates the supra as well as infraspinatus muscles and there's the C7 root of the brachial plexus that continues to become called the middle trunk and the C8 and the T1 trunks they come together and they make the lower trunk. So trunks then gives rise to divisions where the trunks bifurcate into anterior and posterior divisions. So there's the upper trunk and you see there's an anterior and posterior division of it as well as we have middle trunk of that middle trunk you have anterior and posterior division followed by lower trunk anterior as well as posterior division see the anterior division it gives rise to motor neurons that goes to flexors posterior division gives rise to motor neurons that goes to extensors right so now the divisions it helps gives rise to what's called the cords of the brachial plexus and they are named in relation to the axillary artery. So there's our axillary artery and so the lateral cord is formed lateral to the axillary artery. The medial cord is formed medial to the axillary artery and the posterior cord is deep to the axillary artery which is hard to show in this picture but that posterior cord is actually behind the axillary artery. So there's anterior and anterior division that gives rise to the lateral cord that has one branch, the lateral pectoral nerve that contributes to the pectoralis major innervation. Then the medial pectoral nerve has that anterior division that just continues and becomes the medial cord and it has three branches, medial pectoral nerve that innervates pec minor as well as major, medial cutaneous nerve of the arm and medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm which provides cutaneous innovation to its associated parts of the upper limb. Now the posterior division is formed and it is a part of the posterior cord. So we see these three parts of the posterior division. They then become the posterior cord that is deep to the axillary artery and there's three branches the upper subscapulary nerve that innervates the subscapularis muscle, thoracodorsal nerve that innervates latissimus dorsi, and lower subscapular nerve that also innervates the subscapularis muscle and 
the tear is major okay so now this the terminal branches where the cords are going to then gives rise to these terminal branches and so there's our lateral cord and it continues to become musculocutaneous nerve that innervates biceps and brachialis and coracobrachialis and sensation to the lateral part of the forearm then the medial pectoral nerve it continues as the ulnar nerve and it's going to innervate a couple flexors on the forearm and many hand muscles both the lateral and medial cords help give rise to the median nerve that innervates a lot of forearm flexors your thino muscles and does sensation to the radial part of the hand now that posterior cord it bifurcates into an axillary nerve that innervates our deltoid and teres minor and it does sensation to the lateral part of the shoulder and that radial nerve that does your triceps and all forearm extensor muscles and a number of parts of sensation along the back of the arm forearm and back of the hand and that my friends is the brachial plexus all about in a nutshell if you like this lecture please do share this lecture with your friends we meet in the next lecture with a new concept till then stay tuned have a nice day